So, I saw the movie Pan's Labyrinth, directed by Guillermo del Toro. Um, it was brought back to my local movie theater. I'm not exactly sure why, but I think it might be because of um, Hispanic Heritage Month, because it is a Spanish movie. But yeah, knowing almost nothing about the movie, except for, like, the guy with the eyes and hand, eyes on his hands. That's the only thing I really know about the movie. I came into it kind of mostly blind. I only knew it was, like based on Spanish folklore, and it's like kind of a dark fantasy. You know, it's kind of like a really dark Alice in Wonderland, or an even darker Coraline. Kind of like that, one of those kind of portal fantasies, but not really. You know, there's like another world. This movie is very brilliant for several reasons. Um, it's very like, it's a very brutal movie. It's set, I think, a few years after the Spanish Civil War. Um, I'm not exactly sure what happened in that role because it was not taught to me in history class because I'm an American, so I don't really know much about the Spanish history. Um, it makes me wonder, do people in Spain know much about the American Civil War? Because that'd be, you know, that's a question I have. If anybody in the audience is from Spain, let me know because I'm actually interested in that. But anyway, I didn't really know much about the conflict but I feel like you didn't really have to just know that there was bad guys and good guys. Speaking of bad guys, holy shit. The, <laughs> I have, the, the, the evil captain, Vittle, or Vital, he was so sadistic. I saw he was like one of the most sadistic villains in all of cinema. He's, yeah, he's like almost cartoonishly evil, but not quite. And you get why he's evil. But it still doesn't excuse his accents, you know? One of the standout roles for me in this movie was the housekeeper, who was secretly a spy for the rebels. Um, she did, gave a really great performance. Like, she's a badass, but also very compassionate. You know, she's very, she cares deeply for her brother and um, Ilya, and I like, you get why she's so into the fight and really hates the captain, because who wouldn't hate the captain? He's horrible. <laughs> yeah, see, the whole actress does really great performance there. Um, of course, you know, the young uh, Ophelia, I don't know if she's like 12 or 13, I'm not exactly sure, but Seiko, Seiko's a really great performance. I'm usually not a big fan of, like, child actors, um, because I feel like a lot of the performance is very stilted, it's not like acting, it's just more like saying lines, like you're presenting something. But this actress does a, such a great job with, like, doing so much without saying too much, you know? Like, a lot of expressions. She's really good at that. I really love um, the Fawn. I think that's what his name was. He's, like, the guardian of the labyrinth. He gives a really, like, interesting performance because most of the time you don't really know what's going on inside of his head, you know? He's one of those characters that's like, is he evil or is he on the side of good? And she kind of just trusts him because, well, the alternative is um, the captain. <laughs> so I guess anybody's battle compared to him. But he's like kind of like the guardian. He's like, you got to do this, this, and this, and you'll be part of um, the princess and stuff. And probably just as terrorizing as the captain is, like I said, the pale man. The eyes on his hands. That is creepy as fuck. I don't get creeped out often, but that was amazing. It's very, like, I don't, it's just so creative, you know? Only Ophelia didn't eat those fucking grapes, though. If she ate those grapes, none of that would have happened. He specifically told her, go in, don't eat anything. And what did she do? She ate it. I feel like that's kind of a, um, that's kind of perhaps a metaphor to, like, the whole Adam and Eve thing, don't eat the apple. Maybe that, and you'll release, like, the evilness or something. I don't really know. Maybe that's a reference to that, but either way, very great scene. Um, I love the music. It's really haunting and kind of like unsettling, but also warm at the same time. It really strikes a nice balance. Um, I love how the like fairy tale aspects of like the labyrinth contrast so much with the uh, harshness of the fascist Spain. And it's just, you know, even though it's a fantasy movie, it still feels very real. 
which is something I really appreciate about like Russell T Davies' work, you know, in Doctor Who. Even though Doctor Who, well, even though Doctor Who has a lot of crazy stuff going on, he always seemed to ground it in a way, you know. But yeah, the film is a lot more like I was expecting it to be like gory, but it was more just very violent and um not like not as gratuitous. It's just very like you know, false reality, like, this is what happened back then. The ending of the movie, this is when I'm probably going to get into spoilers, um, where Ophelia chooses to, um, live, I mean, to die so her brother could live, and, um, to become a princess again, and it's a very dark ending, because I have to go one or two ways, like, one, she is, you know, all that labyrinth stuff was real, and she does get to be the princess of the other land. Or it's just a little kid having fairy, t- like, having imaginations to distract her from all false reality. And none of that was real, and she did die, which is the most tragic thing ever. Um, so I like how they don't really answer it either way. There's a couple hints that it was real, like the whole, like, how was she able to sneak into the captain's room? Um, but there's other hints that it wasn't real, like, how was, um, why didn't the captain see anything? Like, how come he didn't see the, the, um, guy? So I like the, um, ambiguousness of it, and if you think about it, it really doesn't matter, because Ophelia thinks it's real. I guess that's all that matters in the end, you know? She thinks he's gonna be with her mom and dad again, and, you know, good for her. The all around, a really beautiful movie... One of those movies you don't see often, like, you know, type of movies you don't really see often that combines all these genres, but adds this, like, lens of realism and just beauty to it. Highly recommend. Um, Yeah, let me know down in the comments who you thought below of this movie. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back next time talking about... um, something i don't know my favorite animated movies maybe that's that sounds like a good video um might review told shred but probably not i am pretty busy this week so uh subscribe below thank you everybody once again and until next time peace